Welcome to Around Town, featuring what's happening here in the greater Concord area. I am your host, Dick Patton. It's a pleasure to welcome you back as, as we say goodbye to the month of May and hello to the month of June and uh, memories of graduation at Memorial Field, whether you were Bishop Brady or Concord High. And, uh, and then it's on, of course, the weddings and then, of course, the motorcycle races. But me, it's just countdown to going to Ann Arbor for my football game in September. I see the Michigan Wolverines, but anyhow. But today, I am very pleased to have with me Maria Manis Painshaw, who now is your husband as well as, as yourself involved with this. It's a family affair. Family affair. The dad was one of the big, well, he was the chief organizer, wasn't he? Yep. Years Marky ago. Manis. Yep. With the uh, not only the Capital Region Food Program or the Holiday Food Basket, but the, was it you said, the year-round uh, year round distribution. Right. So it is a family affair because both of our children are involved. Um, Good. Our daughter is the um, chair and coordinator for the year-round distribution project. Wow. And that has grown exponentially since we formalized it in 1992. Hmm. Um, the Capital Region Food Program Holiday Food Basket Project's been around since 1974. My goodness. So this will be our 43rd year. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the year-round distribution project was informal until 1992 when Marty Elkin, some people may remember him from Elkin yeah, Coffee. Yeah, Elkin's Coffee, yeah. Right. Marty was on our board and he spearheaded the formalization of the year-round distribution project. We recognize that while everybody's in the giving mood during the holidays, mm -hmm. hunger is year-round. Of course it is. And um, what happens is the whole mindset between behind the Capital Region Food Program was that at the holiday time, the food pantry, soup kitchens, social service agencies are working so hard oh, yes. and doing so much with uh, fuel assistance mm. and presents and all that stuff. We take over the food and we work in collaboration with them. We do the database, they distribute the applications and we give them, uh, they come back to us. We don't care if there's duplication because we'll mm. eliminate it in our yeah. database. Mm. But we take care of um, delivering directly to the recipients at holiday time. Mm. The rest of the year, we recognize the great work all of these social service agencies, food pantries and soup kitchens do. And what we do with our year round project is they place an order with us by the 25th of the month we purchase cases of food and we turn around and we give it to them at no cost. Mm. So they can continue their great work and we act as a supplemental source so that they have extra food to do the good work that they're doing. Um, we've recognized that when this first started, it represented about 10% of our budget. Mm. It is now in the vicinity of 48% of our budget. Wow. And our budget has grown, um, almost tripled in size since we started um, the year-round distribution project. But it just speaks volumes about um, how important year-round is and hunger insecurity in our area. We know, uh, sit on a task force, uh, combined task force, joint task force between the City of Concord and the Capital Region Food Program for looking at childhood hunger issues. Mm, yeah. And it was very interesting to learn that um, with the research done, in all of the United States. New Hampshire, to our credit, is 46th in the nation, which means there are 45 states worse off than we are with hunger insecurity for children. Mm. That doesn't mean we don't have hunger insecurity for children or for our elders, but that means we're doing a good job. There's a lot of initiatives going on, and one of the things that we recognize through this task force is that people want the opportunity to share information more. So hopefully something will come from that. But we do a lot with the year-round distribution project and being able to work with these agencies and share information and, and really have a pulse of what's going on and where the need is. We recognize in New Hampshire one of our major concerns is the Silva Tsunami. We have a lot of elders mm. who are on fixed incomes oh, yes. and really, really um, need assistance. <clears throat> and they have a different approach to uh, accepting assistance 
than other people do. So um, it's a complicated issue, but I am very heartened to say that we in the greater Concord area really care and are doing some good things. Now, how does the year, the year round distribution, does that collide? Or do you work hand in hand, like say with St. Um, St. Paul, no, not St. Paul. St. Paul's Christ the King Church. Yes, I bet there, what, that title of it there. St. Vincent's de Paul. There you go, St. Vincent de mm -hmm. Paul. Or like the friends I forgot, they have a food pantry up sure. there. Or right. this might have a pantry over exactly. here. Exactly. How does that all, do you all work together or no? I mean. So good question, really good question. Where the Capital Region Food Program comes into play yeah. is that we're not in competition at no. all. We don't have um, a standalone food pantry. Mm -hmm. What we do is we do the order, and it's a just-in-time operation. All of these agencies will come on the second Tuesday of the month down to AG, Associated Grocers of New England, where we purchase the food. Mm -hmm. They come in. In a matter of 30 minutes, we've got... 20 agencies in and out filled with 20 cases of food and they're on wow. their way. Wow. So they, the, the challenge that we see is that everybody's doing really great work. They don't always have the opportunity to share information that mm. this is what we're doing, this is what mm. you're doing, is there a way that we can work together. The, um, that, that doesn't discredit anything that they're doing. It's just that everybody's working really hard and they don't have a lot of time. The only time that the collaboration where we make sure there's no duplication is with Holiday hmm. because we um, house the database and make sure everybody's being taken care of. Yeah. But a lot of good work's being done and we recognize that with a year-round project, we could be most valuable and impactful by giving these caseloads of food to these food pantries and soup kitchens that are doing great work. Hmm. So yeah, it's wondered, different. Yeah, I wondered how that would work because, you know, with them, with always, we're always hearing how we need food and all that, okay, then then the OS comes in and is like, wait a minute here, who should I really be giving this to? So we, one of the things that happens is that every organization is different. We can say for the 40 whatever years it's been now, 44 years it's going on to. Anyways, you give me a dollar, I can guarantee to you 100% of that dollar is gonna be used to purchase food. We're all volunteer. Mm -hmm. There's no paid staff, there's no administrative costs, there's no overhead. Everything that we use um, for boxes or tape or anything along those lines are in-kind donations, mm. which is really unique. Yeah. Uh, we did a calculation on how much it would cost annually if we had to pay for all of those operational um, aspects yeah. and it was over a quarter million dollars really and we're not going to be able to raise a quarter of a million dollars and then raise the money that we raised to purchase food so oh, I'm sure we'd rather um, you know spend money on food hmm. Hmm. it's amazing that you think though today Maria with how people they could be still hungry, but they are. And you know, they claim, well, there's a work out there and all this jazz, and yet, you know, you've got people, I mean, it's sad to see, and you said kids. I mean, when we went to school, I mean, yes, it was, you bought a lunch ticket, you know, folks did for, uh, I don't know, was it 250 or $3 for a hot lunch once a day, or, or was it 25 cents or 50 cents for a, if you took it one day a week you might buy it. I know myself my mother always made sure that if they, if they were serving a hot turkey dinner on Thursdays yeah. that seemed to be the day yeah she always made sure we had that hot turkey dinner sure there are other dinners that uh -huh. I mean we used to have Chinese pie or we'd have um, hot dog and something else you know, or Friday was always fish of some kind right you know those are the uh, tuna fish I didn't care for it <laughs> still don't like it but uh, but the turkey but you know all that we we had sandwiches right and I had to laugh because sometimes we had uh, some people think it was gross but on Monday morning if we had baked beans left over from Saturday night the pea beans. We always had beans on Saturday. 
we always would have probably a baked bean sandwich to go to school. And you'd be surprised the kids that would laugh at us. Beans? How can you eat that? Well, it's got protein. To us, it was a sandwich. We didn't. We weren't hungry. You know. Other than that, we'd have bologna maybe, or you know, she'd make even make a scrambled egg sandwiches. Sure. That's what we had. Right. You know, we didn't have uh, you know the, the the luxury of having a hot meal every day at school or something. But you know, it just. It just amazes me. And then, of course, now, don't they serve breakfast at school sometimes? Some of them do, yes. And we have a lot of children that are on the free or reduced lunch program and get the, get the um, breakfast also. We know that there are 27% of the children in the Merrimack County or in our greater Concord area that are in face hunger insecurity. So... Mm -hmm. That means at some point during the year, yeah. they get one meal a day. Yeah. But the the strange thing and the hard thing about hunger insecurity is it's not consistent. No. It, it ebbs and flows, and there'll be times yeah. when, you know, somebody will um, need extra assistance, and times when they don't. Yeah. I think the hardest part for us to to calculate or to try and assist people is when those people are faced with extraordinary circumstances and they've never been in this position before mm -hmm. and now where do they go yeah you know where is that information that helps me and and I've never had to do this before how do I take care of it sure. we also know the biggest challenge that we see with young people and children is that many of these children that are on free and reduced lunch between you know kindergarten and, and fifth grade not a problem mm. they take mm. advantage of it yeah get into middle school and the peer pressure and the lunch bullying that yeah. goes on oh, because yeah. sometimes their lunch is different yeah you know and that creates a whole schism and then you have children in the high school that have said you know I'm not gonna do this but what we know about the high school students is that many of them are working and have jobs and are able to get food mm. that way it's the middle school children that sometimes fall yeah. um, in that gap along on the flip side with our elders you know, oh, yeah. you know yeah. so um, it's complicated but I I am really very optimistic with the great work that's being done so I know and we recognize with the Capital Region Food Program we've adjusted and adapted and looked at different things the profile of our community has changed oh, yeah. we've become um, uh, a relocation center for a lot of the new Americans. Oh, they yes. have different dietary needs, mm. and we recognize that, so we changed um, some of the things that we offer to make sure they're taken care of. I mean, they're big on the legumes and the beans and the rice. That's really important staple for them. Um, so it is important to stay aware of how the landscape is changing oh, and yeah. how you can adapt and change for it. Mm. So. So where's your where's the uh, where's your headquarters? Ah, your yeah. good question. Uh, We're virtual. We don't have one. You don't have one. So when you look at us, um, we have no storage. That's why we have a just-in-time operation with a year-round distribution project. Hmm. We purchase the food through Associated Grocers, and so once a month, when the agencies come, they roll up, we load them up, they go away. We don't have to worry about carrying costs. We don't have to worry about storage. We don't have to worry about anything. And then, of course, we've been strategic partners with the um, New Hampshire Army National Guard hmm. for 38 years now. Oh, yeah. So we take over the National Guard Armory for the 10 days it takes us to do the Holiday Food Basket Project. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so when the board or the committees of the board meet, it's at locations where a lot of our um, trustees or committee members work. They offer their locations for us to meet at, so we don't hmm. we don't have a facility. Really, it's all strategic partnerships. It's very unique. Yeah. Yeah. So, in other words, you handle the paperwork, maybe or whatever. I mean, and then, so those who have had St. Vincent de Paul come to you, you. I'm still not. Clear so here's that. let me walk you through the process. Okay. Okay. Um, St. Vincent de Paul, Christ the King Church. 
Yeah. Okay. So electronically, yeah. they do uh, an order. Okay. And they email it to us. Okay. Okay. I retrieve the orders. Yeah. And I do the master order for mm. all the agencies. Okay. Submit it to Associated Grocers. Okay. All right. So they have to get their orders into us by 9 a.m. on the 25th of the month. Okay. All right. So by was it Thursday morning at 9 a.m. this week, they need to have their orders in. I collect all the orders, I prepare the master order, and I submit it to Associated Grocers. Okay. Then we contact all the agencies and we say, here's your pickup time. So we have 20 oh. agencies. We divide it by four pickup times every 10 minutes between 10 minutes of uh, 5 and 5.30. Mm. They come down, we load them up, and they're gone. Oh my so goodness. they we don't house the product at all. It's at Associated Grocers. They pick the orders, we put them in the thing, and they're gone. So no overhead, no cost for facilities, mm. no cost for any of that stuff. Mm. That's their contribution, volunteer-wise, in helping us load the things up. Holiday time, again, mm -hmm. type of thing. Yep. We purchase and we work with Market Basket. They bring their tractor trailer up. A guard off loads it. We get their reefer truck for all the poultry, and um, we make the baskets from there. But because we are working with the agencies, the food pantry, soup kitchens, mm. uh, St. Francis de Paul, they're taking care of the direct um, delivery to the recipients oh, okay. through their agencies. Okay. We just are helping to stock their shelves mm. so they can do oh, okay. it. Yep. So that's the different part about the year-round distribution. Oh, no. And then what happens is there are a lot of um, different organizations, businesses, uh, schools, whatever, that decide to do a food drive. Mm. And they're like, okay, what do we do with the food now? We get the call and we say, no problem, we'll take it. And we add that to the monthly distribution so it gets out to the agencies and gets to the food pantries where it will make the most mm -hmm. impact. Wow. It's a good system. Yeah, sounds it. It's a good system. Yeah, sounds it. Now, is this is the result of what your dad started then, somewhat. Right, right. He had... <clears throat> He started the Holiday Food Basket Project, mm. and he did a couple of informal things on the year round, Yeah, and then we took it to the next level. He never envisioned the year round the way we have it. Really? Yeah. So um, it's evolved over time, yeah. and we have stayed true to the mission that we're trying to help eliminate hunger in the greater Concord area with uh, all volunteers, no, mm. no paid staff. And again, that's a remarkable. It's been, what, 44 years? 43, 44 years? Yeah. We have some really generous and caring people in the greater Concord area willing to give up their time and their talent. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Now, are you the only, I hate to say this, but are you the only one of your siblings that are involved with this? Like, I know Star, then. Of course, we know Andrew's down in Carolina somewhere, and Delaware. Yeah. Then there's a brother. Lefty. 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 Yeah. There's here. That's another brother. Right. Is he younger or older than? I'm the baby. You're the baby. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, they're all older than me. Oh, for gosh. Yeah. So, um, whenever it fits her schedule, Star volunteers at the holiday time as a mm. floor captain. Yeah. Lefty will come over and help out whenever he can, and his yeah. wife has been involved. Mm. Uh, their children have been involved, so um, yeah, they're still carrying it on. Yeah. Goodness gracious. But yeah, but even back those years when your father felt that there was a real need. Well, I think... For hunger. Yeah. He grew up in Concord. He moved here when he was three years old. Yeah. And his father was in the restaurant business. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. The Sterling Restaurant on Main Street, which is where uh, Rollins Studio is now, where Heller's and Marky Limited was years ago. That was a restaurant. Hmm. And it was open 24-7. Well, Marky was your father, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, what was Hardy McSwiney? They were two, sto two stores up. They were on the same oh, side. So they weren't the same. Thing. We were right next door to what used to be the Puritan restaurant. Yes. I know now that. we're dating ourselves. Okay. Yeah. 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 So um, they had the contract for the food concession on the trains. So my dad would get up every oh. morning and go down and bring the stuff down. 
but he would remember vividly that during the Depression, my grandfather would make sure the people would come in and eat, make mm. sure he fed them. Yeah. And so it was instilled in him in an early age that, you know, you need to take care of your neighbors and your community. Mm. So he passed that on. That's good, though. I mean, really. I mean, I can remember being on a show with him back in 70. Four, seventy-three. We were both on a show because it was the old Concord TV that. Right. Um, oh boy. He wore glasses. What was his name? Well, anyway, we they taped it. Wasn't that the high school? I don't think. And um, she she interviewed your dad about his part of it, and then she interviewed me about the Christmas parade. Right. You know, and now I'm in my 46th year of the parade. So, yeah, that was a long, yeah, a long time ago. Yep. Um, but, still going. But, it, it's true. But, uh, but I, know, I know my mother said, back, you know, she passed on to us, us kids, that, uh, they lived, they were North lived through the Depression, and there were many times they had nothing. Right. And she always told us about Christmas Eve, this one Christmas Eve, they had no money for, they had nothing for gifts. My, my grandmother, she, uh, they, she did, they did, they sold chicken, they did chickens, they sold eggs, and whatever else for farming type things, very small farming. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was laid off. He was working at the General Electric Cable down on Bridge Street oh, at yeah. that time, mm -hmm. which is the... Uh, Pill building? Well, that was, that, was, that was the factory pop, but across there was that smaller building that um, there was a shoe store in there. Now there's pain management right, in there right, now. Right, right, right. That's where he was in. And so all of a sudden, she said somebody came to their door on Christmas Eve, and they brought them food, they had gifts, and she said it was the best Christmas they ever had. And she said, I'm telling you kids now, she said, if anybody is ever nice to you like that, you be sure to give them back half of something, because after all, there's always somebody that is worse than you. Right. And always give what you can give, and just don't take, 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 you know, like some people do. Yeah, pay it forward. Um, I think we've been fortunate. There's, I look back on um, a number of families that have been involved with the mm. food program over the years and their children and their children. Mm. So there's like three and four generations. Oh, yes. And they come back every year. Um, so Connor Jennings and and the Peroso kids, and the Spain kids, yeah. and the Reardons. I mean, and they've all been involved in different aspects mm. of it and, yeah. and given a lot of time. But I think that's what's so remarkable mm. about this particular um, organization is that um, the longevity of the volunteers and sure. the generations, um, cross-generational. So it's cool. So what can we do now to help them? We might get the word. Do you, is it not just food, but you also need volunteers? Or what is it we can do to get the word out there? Okay, okay. so this time of year where um, a lot of people are thinking about summertime and isn't this lovely, well, we still get higher demands for um, food. So the food pantries sure. and the soup kitchens and social service agency. So if somebody wants to do a food drive and get in touch with us, we'll make sure the food gets out to people. If somebody okay. um, says, well, we'll raise funds and we'll give it to you, 100% of your dollar is going to be spent on food. So those are the ways in which we can be um, most helped at this mm. point in time. And we know that with the summer coming, you know, some kids are able to get through a lot of different programs, yeah. food. Uh, the family still needs some assistance, so that's where we make sure uh, the soup kitchens, food pantry, social service agencies get the food from us that they need. So, oh. uh, food drives, money, we'll take it. Oh, yeah, I yeah. know. So, AG, though, they're the ones that they donate all the food, though, from you folks? No, no, we purchase. Oh, you purchase it? We purchase it from them. 
Okay. No, no, they don't donate it. They pur- we purchase it. So they give you just certain types of food that you can get from them? or is No, we tell else? them what we want. Oh, okay. So we have found over the years in working with um, <clears throat> the Merrimack County Cooperative Extension Service, you know, what are some good food products yeah. that we should have? Yeah. So the other day when we were up at the Postal Food Drive, because we manage the distribution part of that, oh, we sure. work with United Way and the postal workers, yeah. we manage the distribution of that when we were there. The concept for most people is that peanut butter is a snack. No, it isn't. Peanut butter is a protein. Really? It's a, a main staple for a lot of these people. Mm. So that goes in with the proteins, the meats, the beans, those really? kinds of things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's a different mindset and to think about mm. um, what's going to help people and make sure their diets are balanced and so forth. Yeah. And that's what we look at when we um, offer what types of foods are available. Hmm. We know that canned fruits have gone out of the roof. They cost a lot of money, but every month, those are the items that most of the agencies want. They want the canned fruits because they can't get it anywhere else. Hmm. So we do what we do. It surprises that, though. What, what would be the big reason for them, the prices going out of the thing? Because bringing them in from outside the country? Or? Well, we've had some unusual weather. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> what we call that. That's a good idea. Climate change. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> be politically correct. Yeah, and it has affected a lot of the crops. Wow. So it in turn affects the other, you know, the products and so on and so forth. Hmm. So. Oh, boy, it sounds like you've got quite a job on your hands. And the city of Concord certainly owes you a great deal of appreciation, too, because, boy, I can't imagine it. You know, we I, got a lot of good people that are working together mm. to make this happen, and that's what is so special about Concord. I think we can say that over and over. We're both born and raised here. Mm. We both have gone yep. through this public school system. Yep. Um, there's a lot of caring people. Yeah. It's amazing because it's true. Because I tell you, you know, to think that, that somebody somewhere in this city is sitting down to a table with nothing on their plate or in a bowl and mm-hmm. or just a whatever, it's sad, you know. But thanks to you and your family for uh, recognizing that fact, and your dad, after all these years, and, and your mother too. I mean, she gave a lot to the city of Concord as well. Uh, yeah, she was very supportive, and she would do all of her musical reviews to oh, support yes, it with yes. fundraising that way. Yeah, she and her friend Irene. Yes, that's right too. Yeah. Irene DeShane, wasn't right. it? Right. Yes. Yeah. God, yes. Yep, they were cards. How can I get a hold of you? The best way to do this is through our website. Okay. Um, you can either email us at capfood. C A P F O O D at Capital Region Food Program dot org, all one word. Yeah. And it's capital A L. Um, or you could go to our website at www dot Capital Region Food Program dot org and just hit um, get in touch with us and connect that way. Oh, um, good. Always happy to hear from people. Oh, good. Well, we certainly will keep that in mind because, like I said, <laughs> you always need food. No doubt about it. Well, thanks for coming on today. I really appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you coming on, Maria. Thank you for uh, to my director over there, Ian Marks, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again on Around Town. I'm your host, Dick Patton. Have a great day.